Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today we have a lovely therapeutic slow flow. We're really looking to have the intention of recovery here. So whether that be from intense exercise, a stressful work week, recovering from an injury or overall disability, the point here is to be slow, soft, therapeutic. We're going to be working with props that I forgot to get. Give me a second. So I will be working with two blocks, if we don't have blocks, cushions, books, even folded up blankets, towels. While it's not going to be completely necessary to have support, there are definitely going to be some poses where I really recommend that you have it. It will just really elevate the overall experience. I have absolutely no plan for this class. I didn't sequence any of this out. So we are moving intuitively together. Good luck, everybody. Let's just go ahead and start out in a reclined butterfly optional block here because this can be intense for some. So if using a block, we can go ahead and place our hips up on the block, bring your soles of your feet together to touch, let the knees drop down the side. It's kind of hard to situate yourself, but walk your forearms back slowly. When you have this positioning, you can either bring your hands to your belly, down to the side, up overhead to invite a bit of a release into the upper body. So if this is just too much for the hips and thighs, you can leave the support out from underneath, but if it is comfortable for you, this can really invite a much deeper opening into the front of the hips, the hip flexors. Breathing deep into the lower abdomen, I very much invite you to close your eyes or take a soft gaze here and just invite that relaxation. Illness, calmness, it's completely essential to anything therapeutic. And we cultivate this through the breath by keeping consistent, steady breathing. And take your arms down if you have them up overhead to bring the knees up to touch. Still keeping this block support underneath us. But at any point we can take it away if it comes too much. Straighten out the left leg and then just draw the right knee into the chest. So this can be very similar to a low lunge but doing it on our back. With our hips elevated this makes this a pretty similar stretch. You can point and flex through the foot. Let's go ahead and straighten through this right leg. Very tight hamstrings today. Continue to point and flex through the foot. You can reach for whatever is available to you, whether that be the back of the thigh, the calf, heel, or the ankle. Maybe a little bit harder if you have your hips elevated like I do. When you're ready, start to draw this right knee in towards your nose, providing a little bit of a hamstring stretch. Still pointing and flexing through the foot. Engaging this in different areas through the calf muscle. And let's go ahead and switch sides, straighten out the right leg, draw the left knee into the chest and squeeze it in. Take a couple of ankle rolls, feeling the stretch out. When you're ready, start to straighten through this leg, grabbing onto whatever is comfortable and available. When we're ready, start to pull the knee towards the nose here. One more breath in, squeeze it in a little bit further. Drop it down, both heels to the mat here. Let's just hang out for a second in a supported bridge. If you want, you can lift the hips up just to take the block up to its second level. Again, totally optional here. And once again, we can reach the arms up overhead, just inviting a bit of a different opening. Maybe even lifting both legs up. Steady and easy on the block, taking a bit of a waterfall here. This is awesome for allowing the. Oftentimes, when we have soreness in the feet, 
it's because of drainage fluid that gets trapped down there. And this is the perfect posture to cure that by allowing that fluid to flow in the opposite direction, draining out from the soles of the feet. Bit of a detoxification. And bring the soles of the heat and the soles of the feet back down. Lift the hips up and take the block out from underneath. Lower it down, vertebrae, lower vertebrae, and then hug both knees into the chest. Should feel really good. Yeah, side to side a little bit. Press at the ankles and just roll up. Get your seated position coming through to your tabletop. Just here to transition. So taking the left arm underneath the right, threading it through. So we're going to thread the needle position, dropping the left shoulder and ear down to the mat. Pushing into this right palm to straighten out the hips, making sure you're leaning a little bit more onto that left hip. Very easy to dump all of your weight onto your right knee here, so try your best to push it over, even it out onto the left side. And if you want, you can straighten your right arm up and overhead, twisting from the upper body here. Bring this top arm back down, push into the right palm to come back up to table, and we'll just go right into the second side. So, starting from a tabletop, threading the right arm underneath the left, dropping right arm, shoulder, and ear down to the mat. Push into the right hip to make sure that we're even on the hips here. And then, if you did so on the first side, you can stretch this left arm up and overhead just to find a little bit more length. This left arm back down, pushing into the left palm to come back up to the table. From here, we're going to take blocks. This is one of those postures where I really recommend you have support just because it really just opens up this pose in a whole new light. So, taking our blocks here, we're going to use them for our elbows in a pop puppy posture. So, walk starting in just like a bit of a, like an elevated table here. I have my blocks on the second level. That's just what I prefer. You can have them on the first or the third, totally your call. So from a tabletop position, walk the knees back behind the hips only about an inch or two, and take the elbows, the forearms down to your blocks, making a prayer position with the arms, just kind of inching the elbows forward, dropping the chest and the forehead down to the mat and taking the arms back behind the head. Really opening up through the triceps here. Just a different way to stretch this posture and really increase the flexibility of our shoulders. One of my all-time favorite poses here. Straighten the arms out, get a little bit of support from your fingertips to push yourself up out of this posture. I know it can be a little tricky to get out of, but I'm sure you will manage. And just to transition, reset, let's just meet our way up into a downward dog. We're not going to be here forever. Just opening up the backs of our legs into our chest a little bit. Let's just step this right foot forward, drop the back knee down, take your low lunge. I had to say there was one posture more people need to do more of. It would probably be this one. So curl the shoulders back, leading with your heart, looking forward. You can take this right hand to the top of the right knee here. Just looking or twisting back. Or if the flexibility is there, we can take our quad stretch from here. Reaching to this left leg to pull the left heel into the glute. Making sure you're still pushing down with the big right toe. Keeping the right knee facing forward. Here. 
Exhale, looking forward now, heel toe, this right foot to the left side of the mat, dropping your right shin down into a pigeon pose. We can always take a block pillow and support underneath the hips if it's a little bit too much. Otherwise, looking forward, sitting on both hips evenly here. Breathe in to curl the shoulders back, leading with your heart once more and lifting out of your low back, start to walk it forward. Either staying up on the hands, the forearms, or going melting all the way down to your forehead. Five deep breaths here. And then with your next exhale, start to push and straighten through the elbows to lift it back up, plant the palms, curl the back toes under, and just step back to your downward dog. Reset and just stabilize, shake it out a bit. Go on to our second side, stepping the left foot forward now, dropping the right knee back down. Just hold this lunge for a moment, looking forward, pushing the chest, the heart space forward, really dropping down low into the hips. And if you took your twist on the first side, take the left hand to your left knee, looking back behind this left shoulder. Flexibility is there. We can reach back and grab onto our right foot. Pull the right heel closer to the glute. Push down through the big left toe to make sure that your left knee is still facing forward so we're not splaying open into the hip. Just twisting from the upper body here. And release, planting both palms down. And now heel toe the left foot over to the right side of the mat. Drop the hips down. And wherever, however high up you were on the first side, we'll take it in a second. Walking it down into our pigeon pose. Pushing through the palms to come back up. And let's just stepping this left knee back to meet the right and just lowering onto your stomach. Find your sphinx pose. Feel the shoulders back and away from the ears. Pull back on your forearms as you push your chest forward. Now bring this right knee at about a 90 degree angle. You want to make sure that you're hip, knee, ankle are all aligned, taking a half frog position. So if you're on harder floor, you may want to put a blanket underneath your hips here because um, your hip bone is pretty vulnerable here. I'm on carpet, so I'm okay to do this. But we're, we're looking for a nice little opening into the lower back. And so for some, this may be a very intense pose. For others, not at all. That's okay, not every pose we take needs to be strenuous. You can adjust yourself as needed.
and push back up just so we can take this left forearm underneath the right. So kind of like we're doing our thread the needle again. We can start working from here with our right fingertips still on the ground. Or as we work over time, we can start to take this right arm all the way up, around, and back. Move my blocks out of the way. I can bring this right forearm down. Bring this right hand down. Hit the knee in contact with the floor. You start to open up through your chest, taking a twist here. Looking over the right shoulder. Straighten through the legs and roll back over to your stomach, coming back into your sphinx pose. Let's go into our second side from the sphinx pose. So bring this left knee up to meet the left hip, making sure that we're all aligned at a nice 90 degree angle. And let's just first start here in this half frog position. Back up onto your forearms and let's take our twist again. So this time the right arm will thread underneath the left. And if you're ready, you can start to open up through the right shoulder here. Twisting to look open. Just a different way to get into our lane spinal twist. Let's just straighten through the legs so we can come onto our backs and just push yourself back up, all meeting in a seated position. Closing your eyes and finding that bit of stillness, that peacefulness that we cultivated and we talked about right at the very beginning. Taking these few moments just to really digest, process the practice, take note of the differences you may feel what was hard and what was easy. It's this awareness and this reflection that really sows the seeds of our practice, allows us to express gratitude to ourselves and understanding from where we came. All an important part of the practice. Let's bring the hands together, heart center in prayer, Anjana Mudra, breathing in through the nose and a collective sigh out the mouth. Together, breathe in. And exhale, sigh it out. <sighs> Bowing forward, love and light me. Season honors the love and light me. Do happy to say namaste. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up, comment down below, a little compliment for me, and subscribe for more. And until then, thank you so much.